with his hand in the cookie jar, the triple granary drop. Do you know how expensive this is? You know what, folks? I stopped looking at my ugly mug. Let's look at some beauties in the world of Age of Empires 4. Welcome back to Legends from the Ladders. We're back for another game live going on right now between Recon and Poppypo. Let's get to it. Straight away, Hill and Dale again. I feel like we're just seeing so much Hill and Dale. Why do these boys love their hills so much? I don't know. I can't answer that. But it does seem to pop up a lot. I feel like Hill and Dale isn't in a bad place balance-wise right now, actually. Like, realistically, a lot of it has been tweaked well. Especially this map. I have to say, this one is really fair. Like, you've got your initial wood lines. Um, one is a slightly more favorable. I'd say, like, maybe Puppy Paws is a little bit better because it's to the side instead of forward. But you could say Recon got, like, the better natural defenses here. Um, overall, though, like, resource dis distribution has got a lot better. I'm just so happy to be able to say that. Like, it's, it's one of my kind of pet peeves and frustrations. Like, you can say, yeah, you know... The, the, the design of, of the seeding, the way that like maps around me generated, kept things fresh, true, but it also kind of made it less desirable from a competitive standpoint because we've seen in the past how people have missed out on big money simply because the spawn gods decided to spit in their face and then take a whiz in their cereal. Um, so kind of glad that we're starting to move away from that and hopefully, fingers crossed, they continue to like tighten that as the patches go on. Now, one thing I also do like is that they didn't kind of they didn't just completely take away the second wood line, right? You still get this small patch. Some people seem to like the two wood lines we used to have. I'm a fan of this just because it makes you play out into the midfield. I think you need to really think about the balance of this high ground, right? Hill and Dale was being played far more defensive than it should have been able to be played, right? When you're forced to stay on your high ground, it should start to feel like a siege, right? You should start to starve. Uh, like many people would have in, in historical sieges. Sorry sorry to ruin the positive vibe mood, but that did happen a lot in, in sieges, right? Like you couldn't breach the walls. So you just let people slowly starve to death, maybe eat each other. Well, you can't eat each other in this game. You didn't need to because you just had way too much resource deposits on the high ground between the the natural like starting resources, the food, the gold, and then the double big wood line. I felt like it was too much. I do feel like a lot of the time though, there's, there's a the wood is a bit too budgeted. I wouldn't mind seeing maybe like a central wood line more frequently because we seem to have lost that entirely. In fact, I don't remember the last time I saw that uh, on the newer generations. Just maybe around like the sacred site area, maybe like you have on each side kind of like a pokeball look, you know what I'm talking about, guys, where you have a walk in from the northwest and southeast sort of thing. Uh, that could be cool. I think that would be a really interesting extra detail and it would give a lot more attention towards like the fight as a prioritization area of the map. And this map would seem like an appropriate thing to talk about because there really isn't much, right? You've got the, the two primaries here and here outside the base, and then it's just shallow wood. Actually, I will say that it feels like Puppy Boy got a better spawn by the looks of it. He got a lot of patchwork wood up here. This is incredible value for him. I don't feel like the same can be said for Recon on the south side. Yeah, he got scammed a little. Uh, the good news for Recon, at least, is he's not as kind of shackled by this. I think in this matchup, the HRE versus Chinese, you're playing for a kind of quicker timing. By the time you're exhausting that second wood line outside your base, you should be doing something instrumental in the game. Otherwise, as this drags later and later, I do feel like it starts to switch your route towards the Chinese, just because of the power of the gunpowder units. And then of course, the unique dynasty system, which gives access to a ridiculous speed boost to units, all going into the Ming dynasty for the Grenies. Like there's a lot more flex. I don't really see the HRE as a late game powerhouse still. They're very much to me still what they were before, which is kind of rush ahead of your opponents, use your economical advantage at the early phase of the game to overwhelm them later. The reality is that this Civ, for all its benefits, like it has downside in terms of scalability as the game goes on. Unless you go into Raidnix Cathedral, you're not getting huge amounts of gold income passively forever. And then when you get into that hyper late game, you have to remember all times that while you can get a lot of value out of, say, farms because they're infinite resources, everything else, that gathering rate kind of feels counterintuitive because you're stripping stuff 40% faster, but you're not making more of it, right? Compared to the Chinese who are getting an additional 20% on drop off of anything they supervise. So like this wood line is now 20% more efficient. This gold line, uh, this gold vein, is that it now has 20% more in it. That's not the case for the HRE. Yes, they do extract from these ridiculously fast, but they don't make them last longer. In fact, they last a lot shorter, which is why I think we've been seeing a lot more people switching into the secondary TC build. The logic being is that you can actually expand out 
from your initial holdings fast without being hindered. I think this is one of the big limitations of the HRE and why they used the Regnet's Cathedral with the free relic drop as such a crutch is because they needed to. They didn't want to move out from the initial resources and they just wanted that booster to be able to switch over to condensed resources infinitely generating like farms underneath their TCs. Now that you think about the secondary TC build we've been seeing, you get throwaway villages, right? You don't, you can't really rely on the pass of Swabi the way you used to because it's not as good as it once was. And Imperial Age feels like it comes a little bit late of the HRE than it did in the past. So it seems like there is a lot more value in fleshing out because although you might talk about these big technological benefits you get as the game goes on, the reality is that for most situations, the Holy Inspiration buff stays the same. There is, of course, a way to buff up the gathering rates and the help of construction rates. But most of the time, you're going to think about that 40% and realize that's a flat buff that exists at all stages of the game. So why not find a way to maximize it early on? I'll have to see if Recon does that, though. Feels like when you go in the stables, whenever you go in the stables, you're realistically playing towards a faster castle timing. It looks like we might be getting pro scouts, actually. And yeah, that has been queued up. Interesting to see what the switch up's going to be from Poppy Paul. We already see the secondary TC going down. He has chosen to opt to go into the TC before the Barbican. This seems like a switch up from his series earlier against Viper, where he chose to go for the Barbican first and the secondary TC afterwards, seeing that there maybe is more value in doing it this way around. And I love that. That adaptation is cool. That game was just a day before this one. So it just shows you how quickly players learn to flex and, and respect like what their opponents are bringing to the table. I think that's why mirror matchups is an important part of Age of Empires 4. Like a lot of people kind of have mixed feelings about them. They find them a little bit frustrating. But I think it's a great way of educating yourself. Like when you actually watch the replays back, when you actually take that time out and you see how your opponent built up the first 10, 15 minutes, you very much get a feel for who had the better build. Like what is the better build? So, Scout's starting to push out. That is going to be noticed, though, by Puppy Paw. Curious to see if he's going to play into the midfield to counter this. He could go into Iraq, but I feel like Puppy Paw is probably more interested in just booming up hard with three TCs and then rushing Castle and then flooding the midfield with Palace Guard. I feel like this is a very popular strategy for the Chinese. It tends to overwhelm a lot of opponents. I don't think the HRE are an acceptance to that rule. I think they very much suffer as well. And you'll see the push out now. The scout's going to move across, but now we get the horseman. This is the bigger deal. This is what Recon was looking towards. The stable wasn't just about the pro scouts, but I love that he brings that in. Pro scouts isn't really seen much these days, but it's additional value in his eyes, right? It's not just having the, the stable to actually push out these, these scouts, right? It's the fact that he knew he was always going to go for horsemen, but he wanted to make sure that when he drops his stable, there's two reasons to. And we've highlighted before in series how important this is and how great the top players in the game are at finding this additional value. You don't just want to be in a state of counter. If all you're doing is reacting to your opponent's moves, you're not really doing anything proactive yourself. That's why when you watch these highest level players, even when it looks like they're just reacting and defending and blocking, they're usually doing it for a reason. Like, oh, I just need to survive five minutes so that I can boom into my later timing. And I think that's what Recon has done phenomenally here. And Pro Scouts wouldn't have been expected, so no way in hell Puppy Paw goes back for it now. Instead, he just has to look forward with his multi-TC build. And I don't feel like he would even want to go into Pro Scouts. I feel like it just stunts your progress towards the Granary Farmlands, which is a bigger boon for you. But it does admittedly mean that you're giving a lot of value over to Recon. And he needs that value as well, because realistically, there's only two deer sites you're playing for here. I say that. There is, of course, the third one he didn't actually ever move out for. Radiance Cathedral now going up, though. And it looks like Prelates are in position, ready to start yoinking these bad boys here. Curious to see if Puppy Paul will try to contest this by rushing Castle himself and then going into Monks. I just feel like you can't really do it against the HRE. Uh, unless you set up outposts or have a feudal aggression force, there's no way you're really denying them from getting to your relics. And realistically, because they start with Prelates at the beginning of the game, they have their religious figure of picking up these, these relics once they hit Castle. I feel like in most situations, without a feudal aggression force, you're almost always going to be giving free relics to a decent HRE player because they won't wait around. Being not waiting around. Don't have to wait around much longer with this. Regnant's Cathedral, just about complete. 500 health left to tap up. Second prelate hasn't been pulled yet. In fact, does he even have a second prelate? He has to. There's no way in hell. Oh, damn. No, he only has one. Interesting choice here. I think he's just anticipating you have a long advantage. But I've got bad news for you. If your intent, like your reasoning behind only pushing one prelate here was because you thought you'd have a huge tech up lead, 
You can see the bad news on the screen. Puppy Paul is looking like it's going to be about a 10 minute timer for Castle himself. Not that far behind Recon. I feel like part of this is on Recon for not pulling enough villages to build this up faster. I feel like going up to 10 villages is kind of acceptable just to get that first relic in. Uh, just that much faster. So you're able to guarantee the second. I do think you still get a second for free. But the bigger deal breaker is that now there'll be three that can be hotly contested. And I wouldn't be surprised if Puppy then goes into the monastery to ensure he gets gold trickle himself. Remember what we said earlier as well. This gold trickle is more important for recon. For Puppy Poor in this specific matchup, it's more just about taking something away from your opponent. Right? Like, he needs this because he's gathering through these these finite resources 40% faster. Realistically, as the game drags out, yes, you'll be able to tap more of the map if you control more of the map, but you don't have the efficiency of a safe point to gather from. The same way the Chinese do with all this supervising, giving that extra 20%. Which is why you see these big numbers feeling good right there. Instead of 10, just getting the 12 every time. Oh. It looks so small when you watch it like this, right? But if I was to take this footage across 30 seconds and then time lapse it, like super speed it, you start to get a feeling for the numbers and how big it really is. And remember, if I was doing it 30 seconds, that's only half of the Jeep of the uh, the income per minute we see, right? Which you can see on this income. At the moment, Puppy Paw heavily just prioritizing onto the wood. Wondering when we're going to see a little bit more of an expansion here. He did stop at a second TC only. So it hasn't exactly been eco-booming to the full extent. The worry about this is he could end up in a situation where by the time he's about 80 villies max, when we look across at Recon, he could actually have Palace of Swabia. The reason this is actually a big deal is because Palace of Swabia is incredibly efficient. Yes, it did get nerfed, but it's still as effective as three town centers. And on top of that, you only pay 33% of the cost of each villager, meaning you actually get additional surplus food in reserve compared to Puppy Paw, if he has similar production rates, and he doesn't. Right now, Puppy Paw has 2.6 TCs, or 2.7 TCs worth, compared to if you get Palace of Swabia 4. Troops moving in. It looks like Recon doesn't care about Palace of Swabia. He's going fast. This built up in the blink of an eye. We look away for a moment, and all of a sudden, he's got so many troops in the field. 23 military pop cap marched across, and the torches are out. They're looking to burn something down, and mistakes have been made here. Puppy Paw caught with his hand in the cookie jar. The triple granary drop. Do you know how expensive this is? Folks, this is not cheap. 250 wood each one. On top of that, unless he now builds the farms, this is dead weight. He's wasted 750 wood, and now on top of that, he'd need to spend, what, 1.5k wood to surround these with farms? This hurts, this stings, and this is going to be a problem. In fact, because of the placement of this, Recon could just burn these down. He could actually just torch them. And he might just do that. Moves in the man arms, harassing the eco lines. Everything's going to shut down at Puppy Paw's base. Mistakes have most definitely been made. And this is a problem, folks. Puppy Paw has limited resources in reserve and limited income. Look at the food right now. Everyone garrisoning, shifting into the protection of the TCs because no military units have been built. Finally, the archery rangers are coming out, the crossbowmen being built out. However, damage done. The amount of idle time right now in Puppy Paw's base exceeds the loss of these troops, and it makes it a worthwhile trade for recon. Oh my giddy. Aren't knights also now marching in? New wave after new wave. And the problem is whether you can even reach critical mass crossbowmen. And here's the other problem. You can't because you don't have resources. Even if you supervise, he needs resources right now. This is a disaster for Puppy Paw. Food, not even up at 100. Gold below 100. He can't build anything. And I think Recon realizes it as well. He's like, you have supervised. Why have you not got more crossbowmen? Because you can't build them, of course. Wow. This is big. Recon so distracted by the fun in the base. He hasn't even returned the carcasses over here with the scouts. Army looking like it's going to be cleaned up, but heavy damage done to the eco. 45 villages idle. In fact, even more than that, 55 villages not working for Puppy Paw means that this army just paid for itself. And you can see he's desperate to get those walls up, but it's never going to be for free. Man at Arms finally realizing that they've had their fun. We'll back up. Question is, what does Recon really do with this time? It was a lot of delay onto his opponent, but did he find a way of like double dipping? Did he eco scale himself? And the answer is actually no. I'm kind of surprised by this, but I feel like Recon maybe got a little bit too baited into the strategy. 
or, or rather the tactic in this situation. The tactic of harassing seems good, but I feel like he just overstayed his welcome. It did at least give him midfield control, and he got this one outpost down. I love this, by the way. This is a big switch up. We've seen out the HRE. Remember, you only need two relics back in the, the Ranks Cathedral now. So it's actually to your benefit to move out with one villager. Build up outpost next to these sacred, uh, these sacred devices, these wonderful little relics, and then bank them instantly with Prelate walking by. Reason being is that when you bank them in here, you still get the 100 gold per minute. But on top of that, notice that you turn this into a beefcake. More armor, more damage, more sight range, weapon range and still getting that gold. So no reason really not to do this. There is at least one reason, which is, you know, it's going to be in the midfield. You risk losing it. But realistically in this game, Recon should be in the midfield. If he's not in the midfield, he's kind of already thrown the game and he's not doing that at all. We wondered what he was doing at the time. He was rushing up to Imperial and it is the Love Hotel. Palace of Swabi has been built. Eco lead is going to be shrunk quickly here. Remember the Poppy Port only went for two TCs in the end. He has at least stabilized his eco at the back here on the food side. My worrying concern right now is you can see that Recon's done similar, and Recon can afford to do it now because of this. This Palace of Swabia means you're only paying 17 food per villager. That difference in savings adds up quickly to allow you to have more people on wood and thus afford more farms at a quicker pace than your opponent should be able to. Remember that wood is going to be important, by the way. It's running out fast. And that's why the pass of Swabi timing is really good for Recon, because he needs to start moving out into the frivolous and risky areas of the map, which is what he's beginning to do this Lomba camp on the west side. And I like the way he's actually drawing attention north as well. Like these outposts going up, looks like it was denied just before it could be complete here by a small contingent of crossbows. But he's making sure that he bodies Poppy Poor. He doesn't want to let him out into the midfield. He doesn't actually want to feed any info, because right now, Poppy Poor hasn't had anything to really feed back what's happening in Recon's base for, I'd say, about six minutes. His scout got taken out. He hasn't really seen over there in a long time. The only info he's really getting is what's arriving in his base. The problem with that is at any stage, Recon could be holding back the next layer to the strategy, right? He could be sitting on three bombards before he wheels up. And if that's the case, by the time he arrives in your base, it's questionable and honestly dubious as to whether you actually have the means to get the counter out in time. More outposts going up. I love this as well. It's just the double value of the sacred sites, right? This is where it's especially good. So you did complete that outpost in the end. So we'll start to just get all the vision network up. And you can see how the vision's so different here. Like, look how much of the field recon sees. Poppy Paul, this is a problem. You realistically, I feel like you just need to get some scouts out. You need to try and just throw away one or two of these 70 food resource uh, units to just find out what your opponent is doing. Because the longer you play blind, the worse it gets. You're still a whole tech behind. You haven't really got a standing army that's formidable. Like, everything is looking thumbs down right now. The only thing that Puppet has going for him is eco. But even then, like, this is deceptive. Remember that although it's 94 eco versus 70, we then have to add in an additional 15 villages worth from the relic gold generation, even more because he has some out in the field that have been banked. And then on top of that, you're playing as the HRE. So while the Chinese have supervised for 20% more efficiency, you've got a 40% efficiency increase. On top of that, also having the additional carry capacity of 40%. It just puts you miles ahead. And it's why the income numbers are comparative, despite the fact that when we look at the eco side of things from a villager perspective, Puppy Paul has a clear lead. So Siege Workshop. And yeah, they, they, so this feels weird to some people. A lot of people kind of question this when they see it over just pushing clock tower units. The reason that Puppy Paul has done this is he wants to have an immediate conversion into a new troop type. He needs to be able to transition as quickly as possible when he sees what's coming. This is Puppy Paul doing what needs to be done given the circumstance of vision. We already highlighted that because he doesn't see anything, he's going to have very limited time to react. And remember that you can't supervise a clock tower anymore, which means that you can't get these more beefy siege weapons ASAP. You can, however, on a siege workshop, meaning that if he supervises this, he's going to be pushing out these springs every like 13 seconds. It's actually a really big booster, a critical booster, if he hopes to buffer away whatever is coming next. Although things slow down for the second, they will not slow down for long. Recon starting to build up the troops. Has got the gold hats as well. It's an upgrade the knights just yet. It's all three sacred sites. An interesting approach. Recon says, no, no, I don't feel I'm like, uh, coming to you today. I feel like you should come out into the field and visit me. Puppy Paul has limited time to oblige. Spirit Way being built up, but note where it's being built. Not maximum efficiency here, folks. For good reason. He doesn't have the room. 
He hasn't tapped the initial resources dry fast enough, and he has way too much farmland. And this is the limitation. This is the weakness of Hill and Dale. When you're stuck on the defensive playing the high ground for this long, a smart opponent, a high-level opponent, will exploit that to spread out the way that Recon has. Billy's just trying to move out, maybe get some vision, maybe get something down, a sore foothold to begin with. Puppy Port, remember, he's on the clock. The Sacred Sight timer was started at about 19, 19 and a half. So, still a long time to go. But remember, the recon is building up to that amassment quicker. And remember that if you end up on equal, like, villager numbers, recon should risky be ahead. You can talk about the granary and how amazing it is. Sure, you can see, like, you get that additional 10% that stacks with other granaries. So, it's up at 30% here. But your opponent is sitting at 40%. And practically all of his farms are being buffed up with the Holy Inspiration from the Arkham Chapel. In fact, if we were to take the numbers, two, four, six, seven. I said about like 20 here. And meanwhile, in terms of around the granary, two, four, six, eight, ten. It's, yeah, it's like close to 20 as well. I think there's maybe 18. So realistically, you're not ahead. Like, you're very clearly not ahead. Because these other places, they're just mills. You're not getting additional drop-off. Also, Supervise isn't going to be used here. In fact, I'm wondering what he's supervising at this stage. Maybe Mines would be the best way to go. So he has actually got one work on the Granaries. One's, of course, being Mr. Taxman, as you need. Um, but then it's just Supervising onto the wood. As you can see, he's about to have to come off the high ground. And this is where it gets scary. You want to know why? Just look to the northeast. This one outpost is going to spot the rotation out. And that is where things could get a little bit dicey. While Puppyport is starting to build up a defense force, he doesn't really still have the, the same momentum that Recon's building. Now being up a 50 military pop cap, and also having a culverin to counter out the bombards he knows he's going to be facing. Also Langsneck in the mixer now. Big deal here. Really big deal, actually. Look what's been built. It's just cro it's literally just crossbowmen coming out from Puppyport. And this, this is the problem of playing blind. Like, this is all a result of playing blind. This issue has compounded as the game has gone on. He didn't spot the tech up. He doesn't understand the layout of the field. He doesn't understand what he's going to be facing next. And the beautiful thing is Recon makes what just feels like such a natural transition. Puppy Paul can't gamble on it. It would be a flip of a coin to assume his opponent has switched up by now. And he's going to get the bad news very soon. Because there's lags next. Just a few of them getting on top of the crossbows, which they will with the march drills with the superior movement speed. They're going to do some serious damage. 1.38 movement speed compared to the 1.12. And this situation, this is where Puppy Paul prays to God. He's like, please, let me have enough time to either get Grenadiers or Yuan Dynasty. I need something here. Prays to the build gods, at least. Gets the keep online. Siege coming out. We'll give the edge over and make sure Recon is close to crumbling with his keep. Almost done with the Boiling Oil resource, uh, Research. Rubber. The Culverin is going to be a frustration. But Clock Tower Bombards can last long enough. Double Culverin may be looking to argue with that. However, the argument will not go their way as you'll need a third shot. You can see the repairs are just too good. He needs one more Culverin. The keep is not going to stand. He didn't daisy chain out, so he doesn't even have access to the emergency repairs. He's going to rush in, though. Starts the fight off, moving in. Snipe out, Bombard's trying to switch over onto the Culverins now. But the rush through, the Langsneck just trying to cleave through onto the crossbows. Repair crew on the front line to keep the Bombards alive, but they're too exposed. He backs up the crossbows, gives over the siege. The rush through, Recon relentless as he chases in here. And Puppy Paw, he needs to get behind some defenses fast. He has the ranged battalion, but he cannot hold against this. The Langsneck are still standing. In fact, seven, not a single one going down yet they're able to gap close and strike at three at once the damage has definitely added up will hide behind his walls that means the keep is going to be exposed luckily for him recon doesn't have any siege to take down the buildings just yet it's been anti-siege 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 but that could switch up very fast recon his economy it's bolstering to a stage where it can afford all the premium units, not just the culverins. In fact, when you look at the numbers now, eco-wise, the villager lead is still there for, for Puppy Paw, but when we look at the income per minute, you can see that they are neck and neck in every department. The issue with that is eventually someone's going to stick their neck out a little bit too far and find themselves without a head. Recon feeling ahead will now drop the Ford Siege Workshop. Puppy Paw. It's a problem. Remember that sacred site has been ticking since we said 19 and a half minutes. So you're halfway there now. And Recon establishing a dominant foothold here. Not going to make it easy to break out. Outpost. That is going to be some gold trickle gone. 
It's okay. Just build another outpost. Run a prola out. Oh, look. We already got one here. You can quickly just switch your route back in. Did we get the Typhons in the end, actually? That, that could be a very big deal here. Typhons was not grabbed. No monastery play coming out from Recon whatsoever. A little bit surprised by that. Not that he needs it, right? I mean, it, it, that, that's too much. Guys, come on. That's overkill. Typhons with these incumbent numbers? Ah, you got to keep it reasonable. I mean, Puppy Paul hasn't come out of his base this whole time. He's a little camper here. If he's playing a little bit of Apex Legends, he'd be that person that sits in a corner and tries to pretend they're not there. They just stare at the wall and they say, if, if I can't see them, they can't see me. But that is simply not true. Recon sees everything. Courtesy of that network outpost. And right now, Puppy Paw is struggling to see a way out of his base, let alone out of this game with a win. And the numbers continue to increase at a rapido pace on both sides. Now both being pop cap. This is the difference. Income per minute, similar. But Eco, less invested into by Recon. Meaning he can field a bigger military force. And look at the issue now for Poppy Paul. He's out of wood. He's tapped dry. He can't get it anywhere right now. This is the problem. He needs it for the bombers. He needs it for the spears. And he definitely spears up against the horsemen. Flash coming out. Spread out. Man at arms rushing in. Villagers even getting involved. Poppy Paul, everyone in the front line. Villagers trying to repair onto the keep to keep it alive. Front line's folding fast though. Crossbow's trying to back up. Trebuchet just trying to go to town on the keep, but one is not going to cut it here. Molly's out. Man at arms burning him down. Looking for a snipe onto the bomb bar alongside the Trebuchet. Final volley in. That was a Kobe right there. That dude could be slinging for the international team. But instead, he's recruiting the recon army and he makes sure that he gets the clutch dub there. That final strike, that loss of the Bombard means the loss of any wood that could get you out of this game. The shooter would have could have, in fact, as it felt like Poppy Paw spent far too long in his base and he gets erased. Really, really well played by Recon. This was fantastic to watch. I, I love his approach to this game. This is how I want to see the HRE played. I think there is a lot of promise in this build where you go in to the outpost and then drop the relics inside there. It's not just about the gold trickle. Yes, you might eventually lose the relics, but in the meantime, you're quickly actually gathering back gold cost, right? Because instead of running a marathon across the map to get it back somewhere safe, you're just instantly getting gold. On top of that, you're getting a, a pretty sturdy defense, extra armor, extra range, extra sight. Like you get so much info as well as being oppressive to any eco expansions. The frustration of it is when your opponent moves out from the base, if you're actually timing these, these type of outpost expansions in conjunction with pressure somewhere else, your opponent is in a hard stuck situation. They either have to pull military force to try and get rid of that defense, or they have to admit they can't expand there with the villagers. And I think that's really what stung Puppy Paw here. He definitely held on the high ground a bit too long. He definitely had an opportunity to maybe try and push out, but it would have been hard fought for because he went for this crossbow only composition. I think that's the big crime here. He eventually got into bombards, but the bombards are too slow. If he moves them to the north to deal with the outpost, he forfeits the keep in the center and he ends up pushed back into his base once again. Similar situation. And I think that's something that Recon was really good at understanding. That once he's actually choked out vision control, not only is Puppy Paw playing. In it, from a situation where he can't actually shift out to deny that without sacrificing elsewhere. It's also the fact that then Recon on top of that has transitional advantage. Remember the info is a phenomenal detail here. It's really critical to success in Age of Empires 4. And Recon lives up to his name. The reconnaissance on this lad and the anti-reconnaissance, right? The anti-info denying any type of vision away from Poppy Paul was the most important detail to me that gave him such a fantastic win.